Hello, hello, and welcome once again to yet another edition of the Red Groove Revolution. I'm your host, DJ Solero, and I have my special guest in the house, Melvin Bliss, otherwise now known as just simply Mel Bliss. Mr. Bliss, thank you and well, thank you and welcome on the show. Thank you for availing time out of your busy schedule. It's a pleasure to be here with you, my friend. It's just a pleasure. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Thank you. So what's been going on? How does it feel to be one of the most sampled hip hop artists? I got I had to ask you first and foremost, <laughs> just to kick just to kick off the show with. How does it feel to be one of the most sampled artists in hip hop history? Not only in just hip hop history, but in pop history, contemporary you know, music in general. How does it feel? It feels fantastic because after all these years, you know, I have a couple of years on you. Uh, <laughs> I'm delighted to uh, be invited on your show and to um, let the people know that I'm still hanging on here. I'm still around. I'm performing. Right. right. And um, I'm, I'm healthy. And uh, I just, it's just fantastic. God is good. Well, let me ask you, like, how did synthetic substitution come about when the song was in the in its development stages like who like who was that a, co a collaboration between you and Herb Rooney or who wrote the song initially okay Herb Rooney is the gentleman that wrote the song now Herb Rooney was one of the original exciters okay he and his wife Brenda were the exciters with another person and they recorded the song Tell Em. Tell Em, okay. And um, I got the song through Herb Rooney's mother. Uh, I went to rent a hall to do a show at a location, and um, I was introduced to the mother while I was at the office. And she told me that her son was one of the exciters, and uh, his name was Herb Rooney. And then she said that uh, Herbie is always looking for new artists to uh, record some of his songs. Okay, we made the connection. I met Herb Rooney and uh, went to his home. He picked up a guitar and played some of Reward. Reward was the A side and Synthetic Substitution was the B side. So uh, Herb played a couple of chords uh, on reward, and uh, I liked it very much. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well, can you sing a couple of a uh, couple of lines?" He gave me the lyrics, and uh, I did a couple of lines. He said, uh, "Very good." We went a step further. We did another line or two, till finally we stayed there long enough to for me to sing the whole song through, while he was only playing guitar. He was very very excited about it. I was excited about it. I lo loved the song. We went to the studio that following week and got a piano player and uh, went through the whole, the whole deal. And uh, that's the beginning of the collaboration with uh, Reward. And after that, uh, <coughs> um, we recorded it and uh, then we needed a B-side. He wrote Synthetic Substitution not thinking anything was going to happen, but just we just needed a B-side. Those days you needed an A and a B-side on 45. Right, right, right. So uh, we recorded Synthetic Substitution, and then we put it out maybe a month or two later. And that's the story of how that song came about. How long did it take for uh, the song Synthetic Substitution to become what it is today? I mean, was it all done on the first take? Like, how was it, how was it arranged? Well. It wasn't done on the first tape because it was a very difficult song. And we made many, many changes. And uh, to we really, everybody felt comfortable with the groove and the, and the music, et cetera. So uh, we went that route. And uh, then <coughs> uh, we weren't really um, concentrating on synthetic substitution because that was the B side. Right. We really were concentrating on reward, the A side. And that's the song we put out uh, during that time. So we put all the, uh, all our efforts and, uh, and, uh, the future of the song of reward to be out there as number one. Mm -hmm. And we did very, very well. Didn't sell a million, but it did very, very well. Right. And, uh, synthetic substitution, um, was not really, uh, 
thought about as a as, as a hit. Mm -hmm. So uh, many, many, many years later, uh, it was discovered that everyone was, especially the DJs, were sampling synthetic substitution right till today. So we're going back uh, 30 years, right, right, and right. it's been sampled all that time. And it's uh, a new uh, uh, resurgence of synthetic substitution, especially from the, the hip hop community. And that's, that's, the, that's the story on that. What is the song really about? Well, it's, it's, it's about uh, synthetic, meaning... Uh, like machines? Un yeah, yeah. And, 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 and uh, yes, uh, and, and unreal. You know, synthetic is, is, not, is, not, is not real, you know. It's, it's synthetic. So uh, uh, we tried to tell the story there, and it was, ooh, it was way beyond its time, to be really honest with you. Uh, it was just a, a song to put out. Mm. And uh, I sang it and did the best I could, and uh, lo and behold, Everyone loved it, especially the groove. The yeah. groove has lasted all this time. I mean, I'm, it's it's like basically hip hop before the, the song, before the art form it, itself was termed hip hop. You absolutely, know, nah, you're you're there. That's yeah, right. Absolutely, hip hop before. Yeah. Hip -hop. I, I was before my time. <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I'm here now. <laughs> yeah, still yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, was that intended for an album? Yes, and, and uh, uh, as we speak. We are in the process of re-releasing synthetic substitution on an album. Really? Uh, so in, in about uh, uh, maybe uh, four, five, six weeks, uh, we should have that out. Maybe a little longer, but uh, we're going into the studio very, very, very soon over the, the next uh, six or seven weeks. Wow, the way how it was intended on being released as? Like, are there songs that were you know, before, you know, Sunburst, the Sunburst record label went belly up, were there, was there an album already completed? No, 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 no. It wasn't completed, uh, but we, we had started an album. Oh, okay. And uh, it was never released because they went out of business. Oh, okay, okay. So now we're doing is, we're, uh, we're going in, recording uh, Synthetic Substitution once again, uh, with a little twist here, a little twist there, <laughs> and um, that's going to be the, the A side. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, it's a possibility that reward might be on, on the track, one of those tracks. Right. But right. I'm not sure about that. But we're in the process now of uh, collecting some new material, some uh, stuff that's never been out there. And um, I'm talking to people, and I'm listening to records, and... Uh, that's where we are now. Now, do you remember the name of the band's personnel, especially the drummer? No, do not remember that simply because during those days, uh, the band would come in and lay tracks. The singer was nowhere around. After the tracks were laid, the singer would come in and dub the voice on the record. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those, the personnel that was on that record I never met. Right, right, right. Uh, on the album itself, the personnel would have been listed. Right, right. But just on the 45 by itself, the personnel was not listed because they didn't uh, uh, list personnel on 45s at that time. Right, right. That's true. That's true. Like, what ideas were you toying with as far as like the name of your album, what it was going to be, had it been released? And, uh, and is it the same as it, it may be now that, you know, your album is going to be re, well, it's going to be re-released? It's going to be re, uh, uh, Like, what's the name, like, what was the name of the intended album, in other words? <clears throat> the name of the intended album was Blissful. Blissfully? Blissful. Oh, Blissful. Oh, okay. That makes Blissful. sense. That, that makes sense, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> today... Uh, I'm not sure what the name will be. Okay. I, 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 I would really enjoy the album coming out again as Blissful. Oh, okay. But the, uh, I'm not in charge of that. Right, <laughs> so right, right, right. Uh, I can suggest it, mm -hmm. and uh, the company might have its own version of what they want to call it. Mm -hmm. It might just be Mel Bliss Synthetic Substitution. Oh, I, right. I don't know. Right, right, you know? right, right. But uh, whatever it is, as long as it gets out there, I'm, I'll be pleased. Well, do you know how much of an impact 
I mean, well, I guess you already know that the, the song itself, Synthetic Substitution, is served as just about the, the backbone of hip hop. It's become like, you know, a hip hop standard to, sam to sample that particular tune. Did you know it was going to be as big as it, as it is today, that song? I had no when it, idea. When it was originally recorded, when you guys originally recorded it? Not at all, not at all. Uh, once again, um, pushing the, the A-side reward, um, synthetic substitution was in the background. And of course, DJs weren't so prevalent then. So once the uh, DJs uh, became very, very popular, uh, especially in the hip hop community, uh, they started playing this particular song, Synthetic Substitution, and it became popular and more popular and more popular uh, on uh, the disco scene. Mm -hmm. So those beats, you know, everybody, the DJs, uh, the hip hop, they're into beats. And uh, I'm so very pleased that uh, Synthetic Substitution has that beat. And that's what uh, kept that alive. Did you, um, well, who, how did you find out, rather, that you were being sampled? Well, my son uh, called me one day and told me that, um, Dad, you're being sampled all over the place. Every time we, I, I go on the internet uh, to, to one of the uh, companies, the, uh, your, your, your record is, is, is out there. It's been sold, it's been sampled, and uh, even in Japan and Germany and other places. It's being sold in Japan. Uh, the 45 is being sold for $500 a copy, as much as $500 a copy. That's true. <laughs> and uh, I had no idea because I've, um, I've been in jazz since that era. I'm, I'm, now I do, uh, I perform a lot of jazz, and that's my, that's my uh, forte right now. So I, had, I really wasn't listening to the hip hop era, you know, and the hip hop uh, DJs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I didn't find out till many, many, many years later that uh, the song uh, Synthetic Substitution is being sampled so much. Yeah. So I'm aware now, and uh, and this was quite recently. You just like now recent. found out that Absolutely. synthetic quite substitution recent. was yeah. sampled. Yeah. In fact, uh, my son went on the uh, internet and was following up on 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 me, and discovered that, and uh, and he's actually he's the one that's that's uh, bringing everything to the attention of uh, people today. Now I gotta ask you now, since I mean. Synthetic substitution's been sampled damn near a million times. Have you received any royalty checks off of that particular song, off of synthetic substitution? Sadly to say, I have not. Wow. Uh, however, um, my attorney, attorneys are looking into that, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to try to find out uh, what can be done about it, and if I can uh, recoup some of the monies that uh, I should have. It's only right, I mean, because, I mean, uh, that song has been sampled on countless occasions, and you should be living in the Hamptons as a result of that. It's made hits for a lot of people. Absolutely correct. I'm looking forward to doing it again, and, uh, and we'll see. If, if I can have half of the success that it's had already through the years, uh, I'll be very pleased with that. All right, all right, all right. So, and it was another question I wanted to ask you as far as like your influences, like who inspired you to get into, into music? Well, uh, my uh, influence was the great Nat King Cole. Okay. I started my uh, uh, singing uh, at the age of uh, between four and six years old. And, and you know, it's, it's very, very uh, funny that, that uh, you would ask that uh, because I'm from Chicago and I used to do all of the talent shows. During those days, they had nothing but talent sh shows all around the place. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, uh, I loved Nat Cole, and I started um, really imitating him. Mm -hmm. Not trying to copy, but just imitated his music and his style. I won every, every show I got on. Mm -hmm. uh, when the co other contestants would see me coming to get on a show, they would either take their name off the list or they would leave. Mm -hmm. And they would ask me, Mel, can you not 
come on the show so maybe someone else can win. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. I would tell a person, listen, I'm going over here at 9 o'clock. Uh, I'll be back as soon as I get the money. I'll, I'll be right back. And that's exactly what I did. Mm. And then, of course, I loved Billy Eckstein and the, the fabulous Joe Williams. So I, I do blues now, and I sing jazz and, uh, and pop, some Broadway stuff, and, uh, and, and I write. Yeah, we were, like, we were talking behind the scenes. I remember, you, you know, I, I, the, th the main thing that I, I've learned is that you've been, you know, you've been, you're pretty much like a veteran in the music, in the music business, in the music industry. You've been in the game for so long. Long time. Um, what have you, what was, like, what's the, like, the, 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 the best lesson you've learned being in this music industry? The best lesson I've learned? Yes. In reference to music? Yes, it was just being in the business. Just general. being in the business? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'll share this with you because I want the young people out there that's in the business today to understand what I'm saying. If you want to be in the business, you have to put time in. You have to be creative and you have to pay attention to other singers and other people and the music. During the days that I was coming up, we had a thing that co called woodshed. And that's where you go down in your basements or in your garage and you rehearse and practice and rehearse and practice and practice and practice. There's an old saying, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Mm -hmm. Practice. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, now, if you don't put in the time, you're not going to get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. Anything, you, it doesn't have to be music. Anything that you want to do, you have to put in the time to learn it. Uh, I suggest to the young people out here today, pick what you like, put time in, rehearse, practice, over and over and over. And do not stay into one vein. The, the key to, to, to music is being able to find your niche by trying a little of everything. If you like hip hop, you do a little hip hop. But you shouldn't let that be number one. You might discover that you're good in all of the above, or you, um, you're good in one. Mm -hmm. But that's the only way you're going to find out where, you, where your niche is. Do a little jazz. Do a little ballad. Do a little swing. Do a little blues. Do a bit of everything, and then you will find your, your calling. Okay, hold that thought. And on that note, you're listening to, or rather, you're viewing the Red Groove Revolution. I'm your host, DJ Solero, with my special guest, Melvin, but now known as simply Mel Bliss. Um, we're going to play the song that everyone, everybody knows this brother from. It's called Synthetic Substitution. Uh, and uh, it was released in 1973 or 74? 74. 1974. And as I mentioned before, as a lot of you DJs and hip-hop producers are, are, are already aware of, the song has been absolutely plundered by every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the hip-hop music industry. And not only just in hip-hop, but as I mentioned before, also in pop music and, you know, in certain elements of rock music. I mean, it's been, it's been played and been sampled all over the place. So here is, without any further delay, here is Melvin Bliss's Synthetic Substitution. Let's hear it.
Sir, that's the song that started it all. Synthetic Substitution by Mr. Melvin Bliss, who I have here as a guest on my show, The Rare Groove Revolution, now simply just known as Mel Bliss. Welcome back once again. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you again. And uh, just hearing this song for the like umpteenth time, I remember us chatting behind the scenes and you were telling me actually that you own the reel to reel to Synthetic Substitution. Can I elaborate on that? Well, I, I do not own the original. Okay. I have a copy of uh, Synthetic Substitution on a reel. Wow. Uh, and actually, um, I don't know if it would be too um, in too good of shape right now because oh, okay. it's, it's, it's been it's been, it's ages. been it's been ages. Yeah, yeah. And I wouldn't. I probably would not uh, use it something like that, you know? Uh, so I'm going to go out and uh, record, record it all over again. Okay. Uh, the original uh, reel belonged to the record company, not to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I don't have the original. So who do you listen to these days as far as music goes? Well, I, I listen, I'm, I'm a jazz vocalist. Mm -hmm. So uh, these days, and that, that's how I make my living today, doing jazz. And uh, <clears throat> I have a brand new CD out called Mix It Up, and um, I listen to mostly jazz uh, and um, blues mm -hmm. and uh, and Broadway. Okay. That that's 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 the stuff I listen to today. Okay. But most mostly jazz. I'm from the old school, and I love those old beautiful ballads right, and, right. Uh, and music from the '40s straight up to today. And I listen to some hip hop. And that, which leads into my next question, like, yeah. what's your take on hip hop, and also what's your take on the artists from, you know, the hip hop artists who sample your music, or who have sampled your music in the past? Well, I, I, I think they were very smart, and they were, uh, they had good ear to sample my music, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I think that, that's a winner. Uh, right. I, I, I listen to some hip hop, some of them I like, and some of them I'm not too pleased with. I don't like gangster rap. I don't like vulgarity. Uh, and um, I don't like loud, loud music. Again, I'm from the old school, so different yeah. generation, right, different right. time and place. Like generation, yeah. Okay, right. but I like quality and I like class. I like a lyric where you can listen to a lyric and uh, at the end of the song you remember some of the words and uh, you want to hear it again. And you'll play it every day, every other day, or, or often. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I can't do that with some of the hip hop that's out there. Um, I don't understand what they're saying as repetitious mm -hmm. and uh, it's loud. I like a story. Uh, if a singer can tell a story to let you know what he's singing, he or she is singing about, that's my favorite stuff to listen to. I'm not knocking uh, hip hop because some of it is very, very good, mm -hmm. and, and and some of the writers and producers are very, very clever. But that's uh, that's the uh, the importance of, of of music for me is to being able to uh, 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 hear it, listen to it, uh, and enjoy it. Now that's why I loved Nat Cole so much because he could uh, he had great diction. Uh, he sang about love. He had a great story like Unforgettable, for instance. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I love. Okay, so, I, okay, so in closing, um, I know, well, first of all, I know you have uh, other, other things on your, you know, on your plate. Like, you know, what exactly do you do? Like, what are you doing these days? Like, uh, I know you, have, you just recently put out a CD, Mix It Up, right? Yes. 
So what exactly are you doing these days? And also, because I know Pat is, uh, you know, they're telling me to cut it short. <laughs> um, what, in conclusion also, in addition to that, can you tell the youth, like, you know, like, you know, people who are getting into the, into the business, who are getting into the industry, like, uh, what advice would you give? Well, I would, I would, I would tell them to, uh, whatever area they go into, always be smart about it. Pay attention to what's uh, popular today. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, Nat King Cole's Unforgettable. Do you know how many years ago it's been since he recorded that? And look at just recently uh, with Natalie and himself doing Unforgettable. That song's been around for years and mm -hmm. it'll be around for you. That's called Standard. Mm -hmm. When people can sing music that's gonna be around for years and years and years, that's the best stuff. Okay. Of course, you can't always, you know, uh, pinpoint that, but that's, that's the best stuff. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to play a selection off your newly released CD, and uh, if we have any time after that, well, then we'll just continue our interview. Other, but in case if we don't, Mel Bliss, thank you for coming back on the show. Thank you. Coming on the show, and you're welcome to come back anytime. Thank you so much. If you feel like it, okay? Thank you. So on that note, we're going to play. What selection are we going to play off of your CD? Well, uh, the selection you're going to hear now, it's called I Believe in You and Me. Okay. It was recorded by uh, The Four Tops. Yeah. And Whitney Houston, uh, and I think it was in the movie uh, The Preacher, The Preacher Man with with Denzel. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I believe in you and me, and it's a very very beautiful song. Okay, folks. And on that note, if you care to reach uh, me to find out anything, any information about Mr. Melvin Bliss, uh, you can do so at my, my, on my at my MySpace uh, page, which is www.myspace.com forward slash DJ Solero. That's S O U L E R O. On that note, we're going to hear the song, which is, once again, entitled... I Believe in You and Me. All right, y'all take it easy. Here it is, Melvin Bliss's I Believe in You and Me. Peace. I believe in you and me. I believe that we will be in love eternally as far as I can see you will always be the one for me oh yes you will I believe in dreams again I believe that Love will never end Like the river fire